In this video, I will show you how to create this floor plan from scratch. We will go over the drawing commands, modifying commands, we will talk about layers, making blocks, and then we're going to wrap it up with doing a title block, putting it on a sheet, and then printing finally to a PDF. My name is Jay, and I'm the founder of JCAD, a drafting service based in Los Angeles. I make AutoCAD tutorials on YouTube, and I specifically focus on AutoCAD for Mac. Let's get into it. Or the template I'm using is actually called ACAD.WT. Uh, and that's because I'm using inches and feet. If you're using metric, you are welcome to use the ISO file. Okay. So once you click that, you're going to get just this uh, blank file, basically. So here, the first one of the first things I'm going to set up is basically uh, the units. So to access units, UN, the window opened on the other screen. So we're going to switch this from decimal to architectural. And that will allow us when we type something to use inches and feet. So in case, just in case, let's show you this. So let's say here we start the line and I say I wanted to do 10 feet. See, it doesn't understand it. It shows me a red frame. Or even if I try to type 12 inches or let's say 8 inches, whatever it is, and I hit return to start it, it's still AutoCAD is not understanding uh, the inches and the foot symbol. So that's why we use the unit. That's like literally the first thing you're going to change. And then we're going to do architectural here. Okay. And then we hit OK. And now when we type, for example, line and we do 10 feet, this is all working. I'm trying to zoom out. I can't fully zoom out. Okay, here we go. Okay, so now we can see the line and we can continue working. I'm going to hit return to finish it and zoom out a little bit. Okay, so now we have like a good good workspace site. Um, okay, so I'm just going to work if you're seeing the X and Y coordinates here. I just like to work in this like portion or, or, or this direction of AutoCAD interface basically. It really doesn't matter. Um, I like I haven't seen anyone like or any case that matters like if you're doing simple architecture stuff where it matters where you are on the interface. Um, and it's really reserved for like really advanced users of AutoCAD. For the most part, you're going to be fine if you're doing a simple project. OK, um, so we set up the units. That was the first uh, the first thing. Uh, the second thing is basically the interface. So basically what we're seeing here. Uh, so in case you're not seeing uh, anything I have right now on my screen, I'm just going to highlight some of them. I have the drafting commands on the left side right here. Um, I have the layers on the right side over here. I have properties on the bottom. And just in case you can access them from the uh, window. And then here, like, just make sure you have all of these uh, checked in. So that way you get to see the same interface, just in case you're missing uh, any of them. Uh, and we also have the command line on the bottom, which is right here. Not that it matters. Um, you can hide it if you want, but it's just good to keep it around. Um, and yeah, let's get into it. So, so first one was the uh, first one was the unit. The second uh, thing was the interface. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna highlight is the snap settings, which I'm not seeing. We need to open that properly. I hit that by mistake. So status bar. So we're gonna activate that as well. So now we see the status bar, and that is on the bottom. So on the bottom, these commands. This is the status bar. Command line, properties window, layers window, and then on the left side, we have the drawing command. I think that's what it's called. Toolbar, toolbar, what's the toolbar? I forgot what's the toolbar, but we're gonna keep it on. Oh, it's okay right here. So the second one will be the file tab, so tool sets. So that's what it's called, tool set. I just forgot the name. So here we go. We're gonna keep the tool set. Um, okay, so we talked about units, uh, the interface. And then the next thing I'm going to talk about is the snap settings, which you can access on the bottom uh, from the status bar. And here we have object snap. So basically these commands that you're seeing here, these also control the interface. Uh, like for example, this one shows the grid. If you click it, the grid will display. I like to keep it on. It's really up to you. Maybe later on you will hide it. There's a couple more commands, which I'm not going to go over. We're not going to use the snap mode. We're not going to use the ortho mode, which locks it like in 90 degrees. But we're going to use the polar tracking. So you want to set this up on 45 degrees, and you'll see as we use it. 
the next one is the command line or dynamic input. Uh, that's not the command line. So dynamic input, it means when you're typing, you're seeing immediately what you're typing, the command. So this is called dynamic input. This you definitely want to keep on. Uh, the next one is show hide line weight. So while you're working in AutoCAD, it's not going to matter. And we'll get back to this later on. Uh, so we're just going to keep this off. The next one is show high transparency. Now, unless you're doing something really graphical, you will really never use transparency. I've never used it, never. Maybe one time only I've assigned transparency for an object and it was just to put like something to say like, this is a draft, uh, so like a watermark. That was literally the only time I used transparency in AutoCAD. Other than that, never used it. The next one is group selection. I think this one we should keep it. Uh, don't perfectly know what it selects, but I guess it has to do with group selection. The next one is object snap tracking. We're going to keep this command active uh, and then object snap. So this list right here, I just want you to match this. This is what I'm going to be using as we're working in the software uh, or through the project. I'm not trying to cover the commands. Like I said, uh, I'm really trying to cover like the workflow of how we're going to work on the project and, you know, like just try, try to go like quickly over each command and concept. Uh, the next one is the annotation visibility. Right now, this one doesn't matter. I'm not gonna cover it in this video. You can keep it on or turn it off. Okay, so let's get into this. So now that we have the um, interface, the next thing is, I guess we are ready to jump into the design. So for the design, I'm gonna use the uh, polyline command. Uh, in polyline, you can access it uh, from here if you want um, uh, versus the line. So polyline allows us to connect or to create lines that are connected. Um, so I'm just going to be using polyline throughout the this video. So let's stick to it. Uh, and what I'm trying to show you is we're going to try to work on a 40 by 30 um, floor plan. So we're going to do 30 feet. I'm going to zoom out. I'm not able to okay so the thing is with autocad like the the it constrain like the workspace as you're working so you might not be able to zoom uh, so right now i did the line i'm just going to hit return and zoom out so now i can zoom even further i'm going to delete this one i'm going to hit the delete button and i'm going to start the polyline again and then i'm going to draw 30 feet again okay and then here i'm just going to keep drawing it so 40 feet 30. So just so you know, I didn't perfectly plan this video. This is more, again, I'm also trying to go through the design with you. Um, so we'll figure it out. It might not come out perfect, but I'll try my best. Okay, so we have 40 by 30. Um, now, one of the things I like to do as I'm going through a project or designing a project is I like to see the dimensions of what I'm doing. So that's why I'm going to add a dimension style um and modify the dimension so it works for us uh and then i'll show you how we'll add it i use i'll use a file so we can transfer all of that in so to to start a dimension command basically you can see the dimension commands here on the left side um and then the one i like to use is dimension linear you're welcome to explore the other ones i'm going to recommend you only stick to dimension linear the easiest to use um and i just find it to work perfect for me at least. So dimension linear, I'm going to click on it. And the way this command works is basically you're going to click on one point and then on another, and then you click somewhere to place it. Now we're seeing just lines. We're not really seeing a dimension, but if you zoom in really in, you're going to see we're seeing 360. So the first problem with this is obviously the size. It's very small. We can't see it. So we're going to fix that. The next problem is it's not telling us if this is feet or inches. Now, this is obviously not feet because we're trying to draw 40 by 30 feet. So this is showing us in inches, but it's not even showing the symbol. So we're going to fix that. So we're going to fix the size and we're going to fix the units. So to do that, I'm going to just zoom out so we can look at it. Uh, another thing you're noticing or maybe not noticeable, actually, is that it has arrowheads like on the sides. So we're going to replace this with an architectural tick and fix it to make it look nice. So to do that, to access it, to access the styling of like any annotation elements like text and dimension and later styles, basically where we go is to format. And then from here, I'm going to go to dimension style. 
and then this will open this window it opened on the other side so we're going to modify this one so we're going to hit the gear we have standard selected we're not going to use innovative uh, that's advanced and has, it's a little problematic if you don't know how to use it we're going to stick to standard so and then i'll show you additional styles you can use so we're going to select standard we're going to hit the gear we're going to choose modify and this will open this window for us now in this window there's um, three or four things we're going to change the first one is uh, basically the units so the first thing just like how we did with the units in the beginning we're going to switch this from decimal to architectural and then here so that's the first thing the next thing is i'm going to go to symbols and arrows and i'm going to make the arrow size for example four inches just to make it big enough to kind of match the floor plan size or scale that i'm working with and we're going to change the style of it. We're going to change it to architectural pick. That's what I like to use. You're welcome to use a different style. Um, at least this is standard. That's what everyone kind of use actually in the industry. Um, the next one is the text size. I'm going to also change it and I'm going to type four inches for the text type and I'm going to hit return or enter. Now, just to go back to modify, what I wanted to mention is as we were modifying the settings of the dimension style, this window right here serves as a preview window of like seeing how things are going to look like. So earlier when this was in showed like we had the decimal selected, we were not able to see like the inches and feet. So now once we switch it to architectural, you can see it clearly. Okay, you're welcome to choose engineering if you want. It will just show it in this format. I just rather to use architectural because that's what I'm used to drawing anyway. Okay, the next thing is, I think you want to change. So let's go to lines. So here, I'm just going to switch these numbers. Also, I'm going to make it four inches and then offset from origin. This is like how it offset from the point where it's selected. It will have spacing. So that makes it like clean and easy to look at. Okay, so the, the, the rule here is basically to match this number with this number, with the arrow size, with the text size. That's the trick basically. And then the next thing here, we're gonna do okay. And then we're gonna hit close and this is all good to go. And now when we zoom on the dimension, as you can see, um, this, is, uh, this is clearly visible. Uh, I'm gonna actually share a file with you that you can download for free. And it's this one. So in case you didn't want to create a dimension style from scratch, what you can basically do is open this file and then you can copy all of this going to select it and hit command C and then I'm going to go back to my drawing and then I'm going to do command V and then I'm just going to place this here. So what does that do is basically it will load all these different settings and here I wrote for you I wrote a note like what is the scale that is recommended for each like dimension style. So for example for excuse me for the floor plan when I'm working on it um, uh, and when I'm doing like floor plans, at least for like the scale of this size of a project, like 30 by 40, I like to use the quarter inch scale to show the dimension. Uh, and how can you use that or switch it? So if you look on the properties when, uh, window on the right side, right here, it shows us like what are the current settings that we're using when we're working. So when we put a dimension, we are using, if you look here, it says we're using standard, okay? But once we inserted the ones that I just loaded, basically, uh, you will get this list, basically. And then I'm going to switch to JC48. And this is the one I use when I'm working on a quarter inch scale. So now when I put a dimension, you'll see how it will look like. It's already loaded. The settings already are there. Uh, the text size is good. And if you want to switch to a bigger size, if you want to, like, let's say you want to see it double the size, we can switch to 96 and that's actually double the size and that works for a scale for a floor plan of 1 8. So you can see this literally the double size. And then if you want half the size, you can choose the 24 uh, scale and you get the idea. But I'm not going to switch to that. I'm just going to stick to 48 as we go through this. So we're going to delete these. And then again, I'm going to place a dimension right here. Okay, and then I'm going to hit return to start the command again. And boom. Um, so now we have the dimension. So let's give like the walls um, like a thickness. So I'm going to use a command called offset uh, to access it. You type O, of course, as you can see here, or you can type it. 
you can see it on the left side under the modify command it's this one right here okay um, so these are the modifying commands there's the move the copy um, most of the commands are really easy to use and the ones that need a little bit more explanation and if we use it we'll go over it uh, but anyway so offset so the way that offset command works is i just uh, started the command uh, so as you can see, it's asking us to specify the offset distance. So I'm going to tell it six, four inches. By the way, when you type in AutoCAD, it understands by default, the default unit you're using is inches. So when I say six, it understands I mean inches, not six feet. So once I type six, I'm going to hit return, and then I'm going to select an object to offset. So I'm going to select the lines that I already drew, and I'm going to offset to the inside, okay? Now you're welcome to offset to the outside if you want like your building or the floor plan to be theory from the outside or from the inside it's up to you but i'm gonna but that's the way i like to work okay so now we offset to the inside so let's decide something like let's figure out where we're gonna put the entrance here so let's say so what i'm trying to really do here let's kind of plan the design a little bit before we go further into this I'm trying to do like a two bedroom, one bathroom here. So I'm thinking maybe we do, I'm gonna use the rectangle command. So here's rectangle and you type REC and you can reach it from here. And then I'm gonna click on it. So the way the rectangle command works, you just click on one point and then you go down for another corner. And I'm just gonna try to snap to the middle point here. Okay, now this is more schematic really. I'm not trying to get exact dimensions. I'm going to select it and then drag from this point. I'm going to click on it. So this is just like a, a simple re representation. So I'm trying to get like maybe a bedroom here and then I'm going to mirror this. I'm going to mirror this to the other side. So here's the mirror command, MI, I'm going to hit return. And then I'm going to mirror this object. Notice I selected it first uh, and then I start the mirror command. Um, and then I'm going to select from the mirror midpoint over here and then I'm going to drag down and it will mirror it to the right side. And then it's asking me, do I want to erase the source object? I don't want to erase it. I want to keep that. Um, okay, so now we have this. So we have potentially a bedroom on the left side and a bedroom on the right side. Then I'm going to add like polyline. Maybe I'll go down here somewhere. And this is potentially like a bathroom between the bedrooms. And maybe we do like basically the the living room here and the kitchen here and maybe the dining in the middle. Maybe that's not perfect, but again, we're trying to design here. And maybe we will put like the washer dryer somewhere here. Um, so let's see. So now that we have Terry, we basically have, um, so the dimension, the dimension command you use it often. So. Uh, the thing is if you start using the shortcut for it it's actually pretty long so it's d-i-m-l-i-n so i customize it to be just the letter d um, and you can do that basically i'll just show you quickly how to do that so from here you're just gonna go to it was in format i believe it was in tools and customize and then we're here we're gonna go to the edit command aliases so this will open a window trying to wait for the window here so here you just basically go to aliases and then here you're gonna find um, you're gonna find dimension linear and then actually you don't need to find it you just hit the plus sign and then you add this command so we're gonna hit add and then we're gonna find the command and then the alias let's say i want to add gdd for example that's the shortcut for for it so let's try dd i think that that's not that doesn't fall under anything so notice if I type just D, it's going to tell you, AutoCAD is going to tell you like, hey, this alias or shortcut, that's what AutoCAD means, is used for another command or assigned to another command. So you need to remove that first and then assign it. But in this case, I just want to say D, D, for example, and then I'm going to hit add, I'm going to hit apply. So now, and then I can hit OK to close this window. So now when I type D, D, that will start the dimension linear command. But anyway, I customized it to D. Uh, and maybe I'll put a link on the top on how to customize um, the shortcut and like go like go slowly over it. Okay, so now we have this. So let's see. So I just want a dimension like for the overall inside. So we have 29. Let's say here roughly how big is this? 
okay okay and then here maybe we have like six feet okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna delete these and then i'm gonna try to do a line from here from the left side i'm gonna slide to the left by 11 feet and then here i'm gonna go down maybe let's do 12 feet okay so this is like the the basis for the bedroom on the right side and then let's mirror this and then let's offset them by five i think you're following so so far it should be good so let's see what are the dimensions we have here that we can work with so i put 11 here and then i'm gonna hit return again to restart the command so we have 11 here gonna hit return again see if we have a bathroom here how big is it so it's six foot two inches so maybe i'm i'm thinking maybe we can make this a little bit wider so i'm thinking maybe make the bathroom eight feet two inches so we're gonna take a foot from the right and a foot from the left and for that i'm gonna use the stretch command so the stretch command i'm gonna select all of these and then i'm gonna hit return and then i'm gonna click from this point and i'm gonna slide to the right and I'm going to type one foot. So that allowed us to stretch everything to the right by one foot. And I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to select all of these guys. I'm going to hit return, click this point, and go to the left. Now notice exactly where I clicked matter. So the stretch command, you might not be able to master it immediately, but it really matters where you click on the screen. So I was able to do this. Then we're going to hit polyline start the polyline command again and let's go down by six feet for example okay and then i'm gonna hit this then i'm gonna offset by five inches that's like the dimension i use when i'm uh, when i'm doing interior walls you can be a little bit more accurate and do like five and a half or six depending if you want to be really specific with the wall thicknesses to match like construction details but it's really up to you and again we're trying to do schematic here and this is more about the workflow okay so it's up to you but you can use all the concepts and the methods the same way so we have this so i'm curious to see how much space we have here okay we have about six foot okay so i'm thinking so let's add a dimension just so we see how big is this bedroom so we have 12. so one of the things i want to do is basically i want to add a closet here so a two feet deep closet so i'm gonna come here and do for example six feet then i'm gonna go up 24 inches or two feet if you want then i'm gonna offset this by five and then boom and i'm gonna do the same on the other side i mean i can do everything on the left side and then duplicate it to the other side or mirror it uh, but for now i think you get the idea so let's do dimension here so let's see how much we have here three feet seven and six foot so this is generally good so far um so just to tell you what i'm thinking so each bedroom i do want to have a closet into it and like i said i want it to be um two feet deep and then this leaves us here with nine foot seven so now all of a sudden our bedroom feels really small so how do we fix this basically i'm just going to stretch it i'm going to stretch everything down by two feet so i'm going to use stretch command i'm going to select all of these guys then i'm going to hit return then i'm going to click from this point and go down slide down by like i said two feet so we can do two feet or 24 inches it will work the same and boom now we have 14 feet so this should be much better room so now this what this basically allows me to do is um so now here we here we have like a plenty of room in this area um let me select it right here what i'm trying to do in this space i'm trying to figure out where to add potentially a washer and a dryer so i was thinking maybe we add it here we add a door here to the bathroom maybe this is not perfect design but you know again it's all about the workflow and let's say i want to adjust this a little bit more so let's add six inches to it i use the stretch command um, to do it and then this we can mirror it to the other side like this so now we have this and then let's add a dimension just so we see how big the bathroom is right now i forgot how much we put it we have six feet okay so this all should be like a pretty spacious um so if we're adding a door here so let's add a door so let's start adding doors 
So I'm just gonna slide uh, three inches from here to start uh, to start a polyline. Then I'm gonna offset this uh, by three feet. I'm gonna type how much. I'm gonna click on this and do that. And then here's a new command I'm gonna introduce to you. It's the trim command. So trim command is T R. Okay. I'm gonna hit return. And then basically I'm gonna click on this point and this point. Now we made an opening basically. Uh, I can mirror these guys to the other side. So from the middle point over here return and I'm going to trim the same and here we go so now we have the opening I'm probably curious how to add a door uh, so we will get to that in a second I'm just trying to figure out if we have enough space for a washer and dryer here so let's see here so we said eight foot two so let's say we're adding so let's leave three feet for the door entry from here so here's the three feet and then here we're going to go down maybe two feet six inches deep okay so this gives us pretty good space and then let's offset by five inches now when i offset by five inches now we have shorter space here for a door so this is too tight right now to have a bathroom door so we're going to stretch this to the right by five just so we keep that at three feet clear i'm going to add the dimension here <clears throat> and then we have here four nine and we can delete this dimension okay so if we're putting a washer here and a dryer here this should be good space i think it's not really good space but it's not bad space i think um uh, but for now i think i'm good with this so i'm gonna just slide this dimension here and then now maybe we will get to adding the the doors um so to add the doors uh the easiest way to add a door in autocad uh, you can draw it of course but i'll share you on a trick actually um, basically, you can use a block for a door. So blocks in AutoCAD allows you, in case you don't know what blocks are, it's basically a group of objects you can just drag and drop and that will save you time. Uh, and to show you an example of blocks, um, what we're going to go to or where we're going to go is we're going to go here on the, see where it says layers and properties. I'm going to switch not to reference manager to the next one where it says blocks. I'm getting this notification updated that's amazing okay we got it and then here where we're gonna go we're gonna go to block libraries so here if you're not seeing anything the reason for that is we need to select the sample libraries and when you select that now you can see the ones that come with AutoCAD and then from here we're gonna switch to uh, where it says architectural imperial so if I select this file I think I need to double click it and that will load what are the blocks in there? And immediately we will get this list of blocks. So for example, we can get a car. So I can right click on it and insert a drawing and boom, we can click somewhere to insert it. Um, and the beauty of the blocks like this block, this block library that comes with AutoCAD is actually you could select it and it's dynamic it's a dynamic block so not only it comes all together assembled and you just move it from this point uh the ones that have like this you know like uh, electric sign or whatever sign you want to call it the flash sign so they're dynamic dynamic means they have multiple they have like multiple settings into them that you can switch to so for example here um, we can switch this to sports car top top means a floor view so here we go we can basically have this car. You know what, we'll leave it. We're actually gonna use this. I just wanted to show maybe a car here. So we'll just place this somewhere here. Gonna use the move command. Uh, I use the rotate command. So let's go back to that for a second. So to go back, you can type command Z on the keyboard uh, or you can do undo. You can type that as well, but command Z is faster. Um, so I'm gonna select this and to rotate it, I type RO to rotate, that's the shortcut. And you can find the rotate command. It's one of these guys. So modify, this is move, rotate. It's this one right here. You do wanna learn shortcuts, honestly. It just really saves you time and you know makes, for, makes AutoCAD a little bit more fun. Okay, so hit rotate. And then from this point, we're gonna click from this point, I'm gonna rotate. And then once you click on the point where the rotation is gonna start, I'm just gonna move the mouse to show you. Um, so basically what I can do is I can move the mouse down and this will allow it to like 
go down like 90 degrees, rotate. The reason we're able to get this setting uh, and also the 45 degrees, which is where I am right now, is because we have this right here, the polar tracking. So if this was not active, let's turn it off. You can see now we don't get a green reference line that shows us how this rotation is going to happen. So we're going to keep it on. I'm going to go down. And here we go. We have a car. And to move the car, so that was the rotate command. The move command, we're going to select the car. I'm going to type M, or you can write move. And you can also find it here on the left side in the modify section. I'm going to select that. I'm going to say I want to move it honestly from any point. So I'm just going to click somewhere here in the empty area. And then I'm just going to place it here. So that was about the car. But we were trying to get a door. Um, but So that was about blocks. That was about dynamic blocks. I showed you the move command and the rotate command. Now, finally, I'll show you the door. So the door is right here. So you see this one? This is one of the best blocks ever. You just right click on it and you hit insert and drawing and then boom, you have a door and you can place it like on this corner. There's a problem with it that it always doesn't sit exactly how you want it to. I haven't been able to figure it out. Maybe someone figured it out out there, but anyway, I'm just gonna place it in this corner. And then to make it work, I'm gonna rotate it like this. I'm gonna click on the point where I put it, which is literally right on the corner. And then I'm gonna move the mouse down. So I slide it like this. Um, in case the door is still not visible to you, you'll see it in a second. I'm gonna select it. And just like the car, this is a dynamic block, which means it has controls that allows us to modify it and make it work for us. So one of the settings here is if you click on this arrow right here, this will control the opening. So we're just going to do 90. And now you're able to see like, I think the door should be visible for you. This is this is assuming you're familiar with floor plans. This is a symbol for a door. Um, and this represents the opening. And that's what it is. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to slide this all the way here. We're going to click here. And if you notice, there's like slight lines that show like already saved sizes for standard door sizes. So the smallest you can go with this one. Now, this door is problematic because you can go smaller than two feet. And the max you can go is three feet, four inches. Uh, for us, I did the openings three feet. That's a little bit too big. Let's actually stick to two feet, eight. This is kind of the standard interior door size in California. It might be two feet six, but I remember it's two feet eight inches. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm familiar with the California building code or residential code to be more specific. Uh, so I'm going to be using um, that. So and then we will modify the opening. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the door. So from it being on the outside, I'm going to click this arrow. This will make it open to the inside of the room, which is what I want. And then here I'm going to hit escape. I mean, I can show you more commands. This is to flip the direction, but you always want to open the door on the wall. And then here I'm going to hit escape and then I'm going to stretch this portion and then I'm going to hit return and click on this point and push it down to here. And then I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to mirror this from here to here and hit return. And then I'm going to stretch this down. Okay, so we have so before we continue any further in this tutorial, I want us to take a pause and just to actually save the file. So as you're working in AutoCAD, like don't go too far in the drawing or the project and try to save like every five minutes basically, or 10 minutes so you don't lose your work. So just gonna save it basically. And then I'm gonna name it, um, for me, I'm just trying to call this study case too. Uh, for you, call it your project address or the project name and, for now, I'm just going to use a simple name. OK, so here we go. So now uh, we were working on the doors. So I'm just going to add a couple more doors here. So I'm going to add the bathroom door. I'm just going to copy this right here. I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to click anywhere and go down. And then I'm going to select it again. From this point, I'm going to slide it by three inches. OK. And then here, so this opening is three feet. Maybe I want to give it more space for the door. So I'm just going to give it two more inches here. Um, so I can add the door like this without trimming, but I really like to do openings before, before I add the door. So that's why I'm just going to stretch from this point and click here. 
and then stretch from this point and click here and then i'm gonna trim the distance between them okay and then i'm gonna move the door here all right so then i'm gonna switch it to the inside um and what we can do here actually is add another door that opens potentially from this bedroom and you know what i'm realizing we have lost the space here between here and here so i'm thinking we could add that so let's see how wide is the washer dryer area so i'm thinking we can actually add uh, so we have one foot nine inches we can add a whole foot to the bathroom and actually i would rather do that so i'm going to slide down by one foot and then these dimensions i'm just going to delete them for now so now we have nine inches i can move this here so it's easy to see uh, i can delete it for now and then i'm going to move this dimension to the inside so it's clear and then here i will just add these dimensions here so we can still see what's going on i just like to keep the dimensions as i'm working um, makes it easier for designing okay so we have three foot two we have two feet six and we have seven feet uh, inside the bathroom maybe this is too big but i like the size i'd rather the bathroom have good space rather than waste the space here okay and we can actually even, I mean, we can switch the design here. We can make the door uh, come from here, basically. And then here, we don't have this opening. Let's see. We're designing as we're working. Um, so this should be like this. And then I'm gonna stretch this. I'm gonna trim this. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna extend this. I'm gonna show you a new command. It's called extend. So extend is the opposite of trim. So now instead of trimming the line and cutting a portion of it, we're gonna further extend it. So to, to access the extend command, you just type EX and then we do like this and boom. So we have that uh, and then we're gonna do the same on the other side. I'm just gonna include the wall here, the very short wall, like almost three inches, perfect. And then I'm gonna move this here, drag it down and we have the door here. So we can potentially do it like this. So, you know, there's no space and this is all um, like this. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add, I'm gonna add actually, so this seven inch is now here. Um, it's not referring to that. I'm gonna move these control points so they're not um, covering it. And then this entire area is like 9-11. Um, okay, so we're gonna leave that. And then here to add the closet door, I'm just gonna add, I'm thinking to add like sliding doors. Now sliding doors, I don't have a block for it. I've usually um, I've usually just drew them manually. So from here, I'm just gonna take three inches from this side where we have six, six. So I'm gonna take another three inches from this side. I'm gonna slide down by three. And then here like this, and then I'm gonna trim the distance right here. And then we can have here a clear six foot um door so the way i do them usually is i'm gonna do a polyline and i'm gonna click from here i'm gonna go down three feet and then i'm gonna make the door maybe one one and a half inch thick so i'm gonna type 1.5 and then i'm gonna go back to this point and then close the polyline and then i have this and then i'm just gonna copy it from this point to this point and then i'm gonna move it from the middle point to here then I'm going to move the whole thing down basically from here to here. I just like to graphically show it this way. You don't have potential. You don't have to put all this work through it. But I mean, this is I think this is pretty neat. OK, so this is how I do the closet doors. Now, of course, I can delete this. I'm going to select it and delete it. And then I can select all of this. And then since I'm mirroring uh, the, the two bedrooms, so I'm just going to mirror from that point to here and boom. And then I mentioned, like, I'm thinking of adding a door uh, to this bathroom from this uh, bedroom. Uh, so to do that, I'm thinking to add it here, like where it meets the door on the hallway. So here's another three inch. I'm going to offset instead of copy. Maybe I did it earlier. I'm going to do two feet and then I'm going to type eight. So this is how you type inches and feet at the same time. I'm going to hit return, click here and boom. Then I'm gonna trim the distance between them. And I think so far you're kind of getting more and more familiar with these commands. Um, and then this door, I'm gonna make it open by 45 and then I'm gonna mirror it 
based on this corner point, I'm gonna mirror it on a 45, and it should sit perfectly like I cross from it on that side. Okay, and now we can trim these extra lines here. I like to trim them. Uh, sometimes the um, sometimes the dimensions might get lost. If that's the case, you can fix them. I'm not getting the problem right now, but uh, but this is this is what it is. Let me see. Did any of the dimensions jump? No. Okay, so we're good. You can keep them. Honestly, up to you. I just like this clean look, and uh, and I like to actually. Uh, the next thing I like to do is see like how these lines are like this. I like to join them. So I'm going to join all of these guys. So the join command, just explain it on the side. So let's say I have a line. I'm going to hit return. And then I start another line here. So this line and this line are not connected together. They're not one object. So if I delete this, it's not going to delete the other one. If I'm doing polyline, okay, and I select it, you see these objects are uh, like the whole thing is getting selected as a single object and I hit uh, delete, it's going to disappear. So can we make lines into polyline? The answer is yes. And just so you see it, you might question like, how can I tell the difference? If you see a single object, that's a line. If a whole thing uh, highlights, then it's a polyline. And you can see it from the properties. When I select this right here, it says polyline. And when I select this object, it says line. If you select multiple objects, it's going to tell you the number of these objects. And in this case, it's telling us we have one polyline, two lines. So back to the join command. So if I want to make lines into a polyline object, you just select both of them and you type J, the letter J, or you can type join, and that will make the whole thing as a polyline. If you want to make the polyline into just single lines, you can basically select it and then you type X. And that will activate the explode command, hit return, and boom, each object is individual. Here's explode, and these are individual. So now we have basically four lines. So that was the concept of joining and exploding. And now back to our floor plan. So I like to join these lines together like this. I'll show you later why, I'll show you in a bit why I like to put them together like this. So I'm going to join. So we have this all together and these guys, you know what, maybe no point right now in joining. I mean, you can keep designing without joining, but it just has to do with coloring them, which I'm going to do shortly and show you once we go over the windows. I'm going to add a couple windows to this bedroom uh, and I'm also going to add the doors to the washer and dryer. So here, this distance is four, seven. So what I'm thinking to do is to add the door. I'm going to draw it from the middle and then offset to the left and to the right. I'm going to do a sliding door as well. So this one we have four, seven. I'm thinking of doing like a four feet wide sliding door. So I'm going to click from this middle point and then like this, and I'm going to offset two feet, one time to the right and one time to the left. And boom, then I'm going to delete it and then I'm going to trim. I'm going to join just because I like to join these edges. Join, okay. And then I can basically copy this door right here. I can copy it from the middle point. It's right here. And then put it in the middle. Now this door was three feet wide. So I want to make it only two feet wide. So I'm going to stretch it by one foot. Then I'm going to copy it from here, from this point to this point. And then boom, that's my sliding door. And if, I mean, if you want to measure the opening, um, this is four feet. Now, if you want to measure each door and window, it's not really efficient. You will get a lot of dimensions. So the proper way to do that is to add a window and a door schedule, which maybe we will do down the line for this floor plan. But I think at this point, we are ready to add some windows. So the next thing we're going to do is now the windows. So let's get into it. So windows, uh, I do want to add a couple of windows. I know we focused heavily on the bedrooms and the bathroom. You know what? Let's not do the windows yet. Let's start kind of looking into the living room and the kitchen area. And then like we'll, we'll go back to the windows. Okay. So right now, so let's first add a dimension just so we see uh, where we have what we can work with. Okay, so we have 24 feet. And if you're noticing, I'm always like aligning the dimensions just to make it easy to look at everything we have. 
Um, I think this is like pretty clean and easy for anyone to follow. Uh, we can add a couple more dimensions. I like to keep it neat. So here we go. This should be six, six. Okay. And then here, let's see. So 24, seven. So we can kind of break down, like we can make this a little bit more interesting. Uh, this is very boxy. Obviously we're doing literally 40 by 30, but let's say you want to make it a little bit more interesting. All you can do is basically take out uh, from the corner, let's say from here, I'm going to take four feet back and then here maybe uh, like 10 feet, for example. Okay. And then this, and we will like add a post here. So let's offset this by six since this is going to be a portion of the exterior wall. Then I'm going to trim this and trim this. And then as you can see, the dimensions, they jump. So I'm just going to slide it back here and then slide this one back here. So now we can, we can make this, let's see how much did I do? I think I did four feet. Okay. So this is one way to make it a little bit more interesting is where we take like, just got a portion, a notch of the corner. Maybe let's add one more foot. I mean, there's so many ways you can make your design interesting. At the end of the day, it's really what the client really likes and what you guys agree to work on, okay? But for now, we're gonna just work with this. I think this is pretty good. And maybe here I will just add like a big post. Um, doesn't have to be a big post, but I'm just gonna add like one foot here um, and then one foot and then boom, okay? So this will be like, like that. And then we're gonna add dimension just so I see how much am I adding here? How much do we have to work with? Okay, and then here we have this dimension. Okay, so we have about nine. Okay, so now we can potentially do the entry from this direction. Uh, so let's say we copy this door and I copy it. Again, we're doing this schematic and we're going pretty fast actually. Uh, I think we're going at a good rate, basically. I hope you're following along. So we're going to move this maybe one foot to the side before I slide it in. Like I mentioned, I like to do an opening like this. And then the entry door, I'm just going to make it a little bit wider. So we're going to do three feet compared to the two feet eight. By code, you have to do minimum three feet for exterior doors. So we're going to trim that. California building code or residential code at least. Okay, so we're gonna like to join, like I said, join these guys as well, these lines. Okay, and then this door, we're gonna slide it back in from this corner and I can stretch it from this point as well to make a six inch deep. And then from here, I'm gonna slide this like this and then this one, I'll make it open by 90, okay? So we have on the inside, let's see how much do we have on the inside. So I'm gonna move this dimension 19.7. So here total wall, we have about 10 feet five. So maybe we will place the kitchen in this area right here. Maybe this is too tight. And we will do the living room here. So this will be living. This will be dining. I'm using the rectangle command to quickly sketch this. Um, so this will be living. This will be like a dining area right here. And then we will do like a corner kitchen potentially here with a small island maybe here. Okay, I'll delete these lines. Uh, maybe these dimensions are in the way now. So let's take them out. I'll take this one out because we anyway can reference them from here. And you anyway can reference this from here if you want to definitely show it you can put it from this side so we keep this clear so maybe the kitchen will look something like this and then like this again i'm doing the schematic just so we see how things are looking and then we're gonna move this here i'm using stretch and i'm gonna stretch this again so maybe something like this okay and then we stretch it a little bit more Okay, so we have that, All right? Maybe we add a wall here, but I really like open concept. Uh, it's up to you if you want to add that. But, uh, but yeah, I think we have a general idea of how we're moving with the, with the space. So maybe let's add some text now. 
um, to our drawing and then we will add the windows and then I want to talk about layers. So let's delete these. So to add text, what we're going to do, um, it's similar to dimension style, the problem with text in AutoCAD when you start from scratch, before we do that, let's just save the file. I'm going to hit Command S to save it. Okay, now we're good. And um, so the text, to start the text command, you can just type T. Let's actually look at it and then we'll modify it and fix it. So here's T. And then, for example, I want to type here um, bedroom. So uh, the way the text command work is you click on one corner and then another corner. And you're basically opening a dialog box where you can like type what you want in there. So I'm going to click now. And then let's say we want to say bedroom two. Okay, and then I'm going to click outside the dialog box and it looks like the text has disappeared. Uh, it's not, it's very small. It's right here. So we want to fix it. So that way, whenever we're adding text, it's the right size. Um, so to do that, we're going to go to format. And then just like we did the dimension style earlier, you can see text style here. Uh, and there are other styles. We'll probably look into the plot style later. This is where the units window is. Um, but anyway, text style. Uh, that will open a window. Let me drag it here. So we have standard. Okay, I think these two got loaded. I don't remember what point, but um, but anyway, the, when you're looking at the drawing, you mo you should have only standard and annotative. Okay, I remember when this got loaded. This came probably with the dimensions. Uh, but anyway, so this one, we're going to modify it. When you look at it, you can see the standard that says the text height is at zero. So you're going to modify that and maybe say four four inches and hit apply and close. Now when you type a text bedroom two, you click outside, it should come the right size. Okay. So just like we did with the dimension, I'm going to also give you another file you can use just to save time. You can basically come here, you can select all of this, command C, and then here, I just like to drop them on this side for anything like I like to use as I'm working. So now we have these loaded and similar to dimension style, you can see it from the right side where it says properties. And then here, just like we did with the dimension, I unified the names so that way you recognize. So we're also gonna switch to the 48. Um, and then here when I type text and I do bedroom two, um, I'm gonna click here and you can see like it's the right size. Now this one, I like to modify it a little bit, text edit. Uh, so to modify the text, you can actually uh, select the object and then you're going to type T edit. So we're going to do that. We're going to customize a shortcut. That's up to you. So we're just going to, I like just to align them in the middle. And then here, what else I want to add to it? The next thing I want to add is, I'm not seeing it. Let me see here from properties. So customize. Okay, so it's not visible. So I'm going to click with customization, I'm going to click on all. So here there's an option actually to frame the text. Okay. So to see it, I guess in the default, remember like in the older AutoCAD, they had that, but now the properties you need to click on all, uh, maybe because I was using the light version, I'm using the full AutoCAD version. Now. Um, but basically here, when you hit all and you slide down, when you're selecting the text command, you can see here text frame. So you can see like now it has a frame and I'm going to copy it and I'm going to basically copy one here, here, and then I'm going to do here, I'm going to do one here, then here, I'm going to put here, I'm going to put here, and then maybe just another text over here. Okay. So basically this one, I'm just going to call it the master bedroom since it has access to the bathroom. That's master bedroom, that's bathroom. It's probably too small to just have one bathroom here. But again, we're trying to do a simple design. So this is closet two. And then I'm going to do here, I'm going to copy it to here. I'm just doing this uh, visually, like I'm not using dimensions. I'm just going to make the boxes smaller. So you can click on this arrow um, like this. And then here, move it. And then I'm going to do text edit, and then I'm going to call this one. And then this one, text edit. And then we're going to do kitchen here. And then I'm going to click outside, then click again on this one because the command stays active. 
So this one is maybe dining. I'm just gonna say dining, it's not really a room. And then here, living space. So maybe dining space and living space. Let's just add space, might as well. And then here, we're just gonna say here is the entry, right? So now we have all of this. Now we have the text, now you know how to load it, then you can download that, and I'll put the download link in the bottom or the top, but I'll leave that, uh, I'll leave that to you. So the next thing I wanna add, so now we're back to the windows. We now put a general plan of where things are gonna go. Um, for the kitchen window, I'm probably gonna put it once I know where the sink is gonna go, because I haven't decided yet. Uh, but let's add the windows at least in the bathroom, bedroom, and, um, and the living space. So let's get into it. So here in the master bedroom, I'm going to put a big window on this side. So for example, so we have 10 feet. So let's just put in the bottom. So let's decide on a window size. I think let's do six feet. So I'm going to use the offset command. I'm going to do three feet to the right, to the left. You get the idea at this point, I'm gonna cut an opening and then to save time, I'm trying to show you as many tips and tricks as I can in this video. And I'm gonna mirror from the bottom and then I'm gonna trim um, this portion. And then right now I'm just gonna join this section, join it. And then here, these guys, I'm gonna type join, selecting them and then join. And boom, this highlights all of this and this, okay? And then to add a window, I mean, the simplest window you can add is literally just adding a line here, polyline or a line, doesn't matter since you're doing a single line. Um, so that's one way, if you wanna get a little bit more detailed, you can basically add another rectangle. I think it's better to add a rectangle as well to represent it. And if you wanna get really detailed, I'll just draw something very quick. So I will do a rectangle here. I'll do two inches like this. And then I'm going to copy this like this. And then I'm going to add a line in the middle. And then I will offset that by half an inch. Okay. And then maybe just copy it if you want to do like double pane. And then here's another rectangle under it. And now here we go. That's a window. If you want to make it like sliding, if you want to be even more detailed, you can just add another polyline in the middle. So maybe we will copy this. I'll put it in the middle and then I will stretch this from this point to this point. Uh, and then maybe we will add another one here like this. I mean, now it looks like two windows. That's why I think it's a little bit confusing. So that's why I'd rather do something simple. And then I let the window schedule basically determine uh, like what is this kind of window, okay? If it's, if it's sliding, if it's overhang, Whatever it is, I leave that to the window schedule. But I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to what I already did. So I'm gonna mirror that, and boom. So now let's add uh, a window in the bathroom. So for the bathroom, I'm thinking let's do maybe just like so the bathroom we haven't decided the design yet. Um, so I'm trying to figure out where should we put the window. I mean we can put it really high. Um, so let's just uh, let's just do something simple here. So let's just do five feet. I'll do here. So here's offset, two feet six inches, one time to the right, one time to the left. Then we trim, and then actually I'll show you here one of the windows that are in the in the blocks. So let's go to the blocks, and I think they have a window here. Yeah, this one. So I just wanna I want us to try this in case you wanted to see it. So this one, you just move it, I guess, from the middle. Uh, and then here we can stretch it. I think it already has sizes. Okay, so I don't know how big it goes. It looks like the max is five feet. Yeah, that's why I don't use, that's why I don't use this block, this dynamic block, even though it's cool and everything. But the max it goes is five feet. So, you know, like if you're doing a wider window, six feet, it's not gonna work. And then this you can stretch. Uh, I don't know what this one does. Okay, I guess this moves it, this flips it. Yeah, so I just wanted to show you this. We're not gonna use it. We're gonna stick with what we have used. Okay, and then now before we move any further, I want us to start using layers. So let's talk about layers now. Um, so in case you don't know what layers are, I'm gonna actually look at a file I did before. Uh, 
it's called study k12 um so this is a floor another floor plan i did before i did this a few years ago i'll put you a link in the top where you can watch how i went through that one uh but for the most part basically uh <clears throat> excuse me so this one like it's just i want to show you like how layers are kind of work once we have them set up so right here um as you can see i have all the elements in there and you can quickly see that all the doors are all red and the windows are yellow the dimensions are yellow and then we have i think the text i did it in yellow as well uh, the furniture in cyan and so on you get the idea now how do you access layers if we click here um, on the first tab uh, you will see a list here in case you don't see it you can always if any of these that you don't see on the interface any of the commands you can always come to window and that will allow you to see uh, the ones that are missing okay so now um so now in this list so let's talk about layers a little bit so i'm gonna open this window and i clicked on that button that undocked it basically and now we can look at it like this so the first benefit of the layers is it allows us to organize our uh, our objects um and obviously the easiest thing to like the easiest way to identify them is by color uh, the next benefit of layers beside the identification is that you're able also to um, to quickly like hide and like to turn on or off the object. So for example, here the doors, let's say I don't want to see the doors for a moment. Let's say I'm just working on the openings. I'm going to click on this and that will hide all the doors or essentially it's not the doors only. It's whatever is sitting on this layer, uh, A doors. Uh, and the same with the dimensions so here we go this will hide the dimension and this will turn it on uh, another feature is also another like another feature of layers is also the ability to lock so let's say i don't want to switch anything about the doors i'm going to lock it there's a lock here in case you don't see the lock you can right click and you can see the different settings for the layer so i'm going to lock that i'm going to lock the walls for example and I'm gonna lock the windows. Okay, so all these layers are locked. I'm just gonna click here to put it back where it was. You can always extend it by doing this. Okay, so we have all of this locked. So now if I select everything and I erase it, erase is a delete command, you will see everything went away except the, the stuff that are locked. Now the dimensions didn't get locked because they weren't selected. But let's say I select, here's a bigger window. So here you go, you get the idea, okay? So that's the second, like second, third, I think I've talked about three benefits so far. Uh, the next benefit is basically um, the line weight. So we're able to control the, so what is the line weight? It's basically like how thick the line is when we print this into uh, a PDF. So this is where we do it, right here. There's a setting for it. Um, and the thing about the line weight is basically you want the walls to be uh, the thickest and then you want dimensions and text, for example, to be uh, the thinnest. All right. So we will get to this uh, once we get to the printing uh, phase, essentially. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the ability to change the line type. So what is line type? Uh, so line type is basically like if we want to see a line to be dashed. So, for example, uh, I think here the only object that I had that was dashed, I think it was just this red line right here. So I have a layer, it's called hidden. Okay, so I'm representing objects that are above the floor plan or below, um, or like something you just want to put for schematic or for some reason. Um, so this layer specifically, I assigned to it uh, a line type, which is called hidden to. Um, so if you want to assign a certain line type, for example, like this one for the text. Now for the text, it's not gonna matter, but let's say for the furniture, okay? So here's the furniture. Let's say I wanna show them in a different line type. So I clicked on manage and let's open this window. And then from here, these are the ones that are loaded. If I want to add additional ones, I'm gonna go to load and then load will show us even another window. Now you're seeing we have almost three windows at this point. A lot of windows but anyway <clears throat> so from here we can choose from this list of line types um, one that we want to use with furniture so for example let's say we want to show it 
using this one, zigzag. Actually, I don't think I've tried this one before. So let's let's try it. Let's check it out. So I'm gonna add this. So the first thing is it loaded the line type. You didn't select it. And then now I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna hit OK. So now that is selected. Now when we uh, zoom on the furniture, you can see all the objects. That's very cool actually. So here we go. Like it, you can clearly clearly see it. Now you might notice you might you might have this problem. This is a common problem in AutoCAD is that you're not seeing the dashed line. So for example, this line right here, I'm gonna select on it. So this polyline is sitting on the hidden layer. And even though it's assigned uh, the hidden to line type, it's not visible. Uh, now this is, unfortunately, it's like an advanced problem in AutoCAD, but the way to see it is if you go on the bottom right side where the status bar is essentially, there's something called annotation scale. So this one you wanna set up to quarter inch, and then you want a region uh, or to regenerate the drawing and this should make it appear. So boom, here we go. Okay, so what does this mean? So when we place this drawing on a quarter scale on a paper, this is how the lines are gonna appear. That's what it means for the annotation scale. If we place it on a half inch scale, so I'm going to switch to that, it doesn't automatically regenerate. You need to type regenerate and then boom, it will show it like this. Now the zigzag is obviously going really off here, but again, like we're able to see clearly how this works. Uh, the next one is if we choose, for example, a one inch, one inch scale, this is, it keeps looking smaller and smaller. By default in AutoCAD, the annotation scale is set at one to one. So if we go back to our file, and I'm just going to dock this back, and we look here on the uh, bottom right, you're going to see it's one to one. So so that's that's the thing with dashed lines. Um, but unfortunately, that's how AutoCAD is designed. That's the logic of it. But you know, you get to learn it and understand it. Okay, so that was about layers. So we talked about like organizing stuff. We talked about we talked about locking it, turning on and off the visibility essentially, and we talked about the line weight, which is the thickness, which we will see when we print. And we talked about the line type. So how do we create layers here? So to create layers, we're gonna. I'm just gonna do a couple, and then I'll show you a file, and I'll give you the download link for free, so you can use it for your project and save time. So from here, under layers. There's a button called new layer. I'm going to click it. And then here we're going to call it, um, let's say, I'm going to say JC for JCAD. And then here I'm going to say walls. Okay. So here I'm going to choose the color to be green. Uh, the line weight, I want it to be like it. I like walls to be thick generally. Like it's just good. It's kind of the standard, like the drafting standard to have the walls thicker than the rest of the elements. So maybe I'll do, I don't know, 14. 0 0.014 inch, okay? Uh, and in case you're not seeing the inches and feet, like in this window, basically, I think we need to go to the window or maybe format. And then from here, we need to basically go to line type. And then from here, oops, that's the line type. The one we want is actually the line weight. Let's go back to the top, line weight. So here you just switch the units essentially. So we're switching it. I, I use inches. Like, doesn't matter, honestly. Uh, you'll see in a second, it really doesn't matter once you have a set of layers. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna do is the line type. By default, AutoCAD only loads the continuous type, which is obviously what we're seeing. It's just a straight line. There's no dash to it. So if I wanna add additional ones, like I said, you need to hit manage, then load, then assign it to your layer, okay? So now I created this layer. Um, now to highlight something is if you notice everything we're creating was if we select like this polyline, you will see the layer here, it says zero. Now let's say I wanna create from the beginning, which is technically what I usually do, is basically I start from the walls layer. So this is how I would really start the drawing. If I'm doing, if I'm redoing this, I would like do it this way. Like here's 20 feet, 10 feet, and then I close the shape and then you offset. And then when you offset it, it will be the correct layer. So you get the idea. But since we didn't start this way, we will add the furniture with the proper layers. Um, but for now, we're just gonna fix all of these, okay? And to save ourselves time, like I said, there's a file already. 
it's this one right here. I'm going to select this one and that's going to load all of the layers that I believe you should use just to save you time. You can create more if you want. I'm going to do control C and then uh, command C on the Mac on the windows. You can do control and then boom. I think control works on the Mac. I just never tried it, but command C command V is the way to go. So now when I copied these within my project, you can see all of them got loaded. Okay. So I'm just going to go to, to the one I created JC walls. I'm just going to delete that one. I'm not going to use it. We're just going to stick to, to the ones I've created before. So now that I added the layers, what I want to do is basically, um, assign the objects to the layers that they're meant to be. So I'm going to select this, this, uh, like all the text element right here. And then we're gonna switch their layer. I can switch it either from the layer window or we can do it, this is text, or we can switch it from the properties. So basically we're gonna switch this to dimensions. There's actually a setting for the dimension where you can tell the dimensions to always be on a certain layer. So maybe we should switch to that. Uh, I just don't remember where was the setting for it. But we'll leave it for another tutorial, maybe not this one. Okay, so here's dimensions. And then we're gonna switch the door. You get the idea. So I deselected by clicking shift and uh, holding shift and then selecting that text. So this is all the doors that I believe I have. And if we add more, I think we're not adding any more doors. Maybe one or two, but for now, these are good. So these are doors. And then let's do, so there's actually a match command. So uh, the shortcut for it is MA, which basically you select what is like how you want something to look like, like how you want the object to be. So this is the source object. And then I'm gonna match it with that. So here we go. So this is this for the, the other dimensions. And I think we're good. Now for the walls, uh, since most of these are kind of joined already, just gonna join these again. This is kind of why I like the join command. So that way they stay on the right layer. And then we're just going to match them. It's a pretty fast process if you have everything. Like once you master the workflow, which is, again, this is what this video is all about. Um, you'll be able to quickly like generate projects on AutoCAD. Uh, okay. And then let's do the windows. So one windows, how many we've only done three. I think we need to continue with the windows. So here, windows, and then boom. And I think we have all the layers the way we want them uh, to be. Okay, maybe just this wall, we missed it. I'm just gonna trim this. Okay, join it, and then boom. When you join it, it, it will switch the layer automatically. So that's pretty nice. Okay, so let's keep going with the windows. So we were talking about the design of the living space. Um, I guess we still need to add um additional windows so i like to do small windows usually in the bedrooms so here now let's just switch our layer like i said now we're going to work as if we have always have used layers so from here uh, i'm gonna i like to add small windows in the bedrooms so let's do like this and then like we'll do two feet oops to the top and then to the bottom and then i'm gonna trim this and then we can basically join these like this. And then I can switch the layer to windows or I can just draw them and then match basically the properties. Okay. So it's pretty straightforward. Okay. So this we're going to match. Um, okay. So like I said, I like to do the openings, uh, I like to do the openings basically like even though we're adding the windows but i still like to do the openings and i'll show you why so let's say i add the windows to the other side so let's say i mirror them here to the other side so they're gonna sit there perfectly but if i hide the layer and i don't want to show the windows i only want to show the walls and the openings when i hide the windows you will see there's no openings here but here you can clearly see like there are openings there are no windows sitting there so that's why i like to actually like do openings for the doors and the windows it's up to you i just find it to be faster so here i'm going to use a new command it's called dray 
So array will allow us to throw an infinite line, basically, literally, as you can see here. So I'm, I like to use it as a reference uh, command. <clears throat> and if like you'll often, like if you learn to use Ray often, it will save you a lot of uh, time basically. But here we go. So here I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna trim based on Ray and then here, so if I do that, let's just delete this. Okay, so I added the missing lines. Okay, and then we can join all of them. Here we go. I like to join them, it's up to you really. I just feel it just makes it easier when, when I follow the same workflow, it's all about workflow. Okay, so now we have the windows in the bedrooms. So let's say we're going to add a couple more windows here. I'll just add something here. I'll add them real quick so that way we can jump to the next concept. So let's do here, for example, five feet. Maybe five feet is not going to work. Let's do four feet. Okay, and then let's slide it a little bit to the right because it's very close to the door. And then boom, then we'll join. I'll just do the openings first and then we'll we'll add uh, more windows and then the living space let's say i want to add here so let's say we have 19 feet let's just add like two big six feet windows so i'm gonna do it from the middle i'm gonna do six feet here okay so i'm just gonna move this to the right by two feet for example uh, and then i'll mirror this to the other side and then we're gonna trim this and boom. So we're gonna join this and this is good. And then I guess we'll just add, so so if we added the big windows here, so maybe here we leave this wall as it is and we'll just add another window on this side for the dining space. So maybe we'll go away four feet and then we'll offset. I'm doing six feet, but I mean, it's all up to you how you wanna design your space. Um, it's just this is how I want to do it. And then if you want to add dimensions, we'll add to that as well. But now let's switch the layer to windows and let's just add these like this. Okay, and then here, this one, and then we can just mirror it basically. Whenever you can use the mirror command, that will really help you save a lot of time. Okay, so here's another rectangle and boom, we have all of these good here. So let's say we wanna show like there's something above the entry. So we'll just add dashed lines here. So let's switch our layer. We can switch it from here as well. So I'm just gonna add dashed lines. Maybe we'll do, um, maybe I'll do another segment of this where I go over the layers as well. Uh, not the layers, like the elevations of this. Oh, and like I mentioned earlier, if you want to see the dashed line, you want to switch the annotation scale to quarter inch, and then we're going to region. And this is now clearly visible. Okay, so what's next? So we have we have all the layers uh, assigned, and we're using them, and everything looks good. So the next thing we should do is let's start actually working on the kitchen. Um, so for the kitchen, we're going to probably use multiple layers. I'm going to use the, so let's switch to casework. Okay. And then here we're going to do, I think this dimension jump, this should be highlighting uh, up to this point, basically. And I think for now, oh, let's keep the dimensions. It's not a, it's not a problem. It's not that problematic. So from this point, I'm going to come out by two feet. And then here the total is 10 feet 5, so I'm just going to do minus 2 feet from that, so it's, we're going to do 8 feet 5 inches. And then here let's go, for example, let's do 9, let's do 10 feet, we can always modify it. Okay, so like this, and then I'm going to close it to close the polyline, okay. So here, let's decide, let's see if we have room for like an island. So I'm gonna do powder line, and then I'm gonna come out three feet from this corner point. And then here, let's see how much we have. So we have eight feet, five inches. So if I take three feet from that, we're gonna be left with five. 
feet, five inches. Let's just do five feet. Actually, let's just do five feet, five, okay? So let's keep it three feet perimeter. And then we're gonna slide from here. So we end up getting a uh, seven foot or seven feet island. And then I'm gonna close it. Now this island may be a little too wide. Let's let let's I do actually wanna lose the five inches. And we can always use dimensions just to see how big things are. Okay, so the dimension came out in the casework layer. Um, so we have three feet, five here. I will switch the layers to their right dimension because I don't want them to be uh, like that. So let's do up to this point. So that's total 12 feet. Okay. All right, so we have this. I can add this between them. It's just, I like to see the dimensions uh, around the island, just to make sure I designed it the way I like. Okay, so let's decide here where we're gonna put the sink. So let's say we put the sink here. I'm just gonna do a rectangle, uh, maybe somewhere here. Oops, that's too big, but we're just trying to do something symbolic here. And then I can place the fridge potentially in this corner right here. So I will slide this maybe two feet. I don't know which fridge I'm going to use yet, but we'll see what I have. Um, and then here, maybe I will put uh, the range or the stove. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm going to use some blocks I did before. Like always, I'll give you the download, download link for these ones. Um, so let's actually just copy all of this. Okay, we have we have some beds we'll use that too we're just going to try to use everything that i have here okay so we have a fridge so let's just copy that okay this is good okay so here's the refrigerator and then i think i placed the sink perfect so this is good so let's place it here and then it doesn't look like I did a range, but I'll leave you a link where you can get some more, like some more of these blogs. I don't have them all for free, but you'll be able to find like really good ones um, for your project. Then let's try the hood and I'll just try to like draw a very simple range for our purpose. Okay, so here's the hood. So this one here, I'll just give more room for the fridge. I'll just give it another, let's actually stretch this by six inches and then let's move this three inches uh, you can i mean you can put it right at the wall but it's better to give a little bit room for the fridge uh, and this is a hood so this we can delete now i will rotate the sink um, you know what i'm gonna put uh, the sink here like on this let's put it let's align it along the mid midpoint of the island and then I'm gonna push it a notch, maybe one inch off the back. And then here, uh, so let's do the kitchen. Let's maybe put this here, put the text so it's not in the way. Okay, I think the hood, I will not use it right now. Uh, let's, let's actually use it. It's just the problem with this block that I did, it actually has something called a mask. So it's hiding what's underneath it. Um, you can use it, you're welcome to use it. Uh, I will just not use it for the purpose of this, okay? So we have these. So now I'm going to assign the fridge to its own layer. So let's place it on uh, let's place it on equipment and then the sink is going to fall under fixture. Okay? And then the stove, let's just draw something simple. Um, let's do, for example, two feet by three feet like this. And then I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna align it here. I'll push it back by maybe two inches. And then I'm gonna make this, let's do equipment. And then let's say, I'm just gonna do circles here. So let's just divide this um, by three. So let's match this. So if we wanna divide it by three, I think there's a command divide. And then you select the object and I'm gonna say, I want three segments. So it didn't divide the line itself, but the way it did it, it actually gave us reference points that you can see here. Uh, well, you're not seeing them really, but when I select them, you can see like they're highlighted in blue and you can see them here. For us to see them clearly, we need to go to 
format and then point style. And then here, I'm just going to switch to this X. So now we can clearly see them. So the divide command allowed us to do this. So I'm just going to do this. And then here, I'm going to do a line. And basically what I'm going to do is a circle. Let's say we do four inches. So, and then I'm just going to delete this. I'll just leave the points. I'm going to switch this layer to this layer to the equipment layer since we're working with this. And then I'm just going to mirror this and then mirror it. And then maybe we'll do one in the middle. So I'll move it here to the middle and boom. So we can delete this. Um, you can detail it more if you want, but I think this is pretty clear. Um, so this one, let's say you want to make this a block so you can type B and then we're, from here, we're going to say uh, J stove. Okay. And then you want to select the base point for it. Um, so this is like the window that allows you to make blocks. So you need the name. I selected the object first, and then you need something called a base point. So the base point is the control point or the point from which like you move or you insert this object. So I'm going to click here and then I'm going to make the point, for example, from here. And then I'm going to say create block or click on it. And then when I select this, this is officially a block now. Okay. And the objects move together. Um, now, something about doing blocks, um, you always want to, like, you always want to insert the point, the insertion point. You want to put it somewhere where it's easy, like, to control it. I could have placed it in the middle or from the side, but usually I tend to move, like, this from the back, just like I did. I did with this one and with the fridge. I guess I did it from the corner, but you get the idea. Okay. So now we have our elements. Um, the last thing I want to add really to the kitchen is I just want to add another window behind the sink because I always like to have a window by the sink. So from here, we're going to reference the middle point. Let's switch to the window layer. Okay, and we're going to offset. Let's do two feet from here, two feet from here. Okay, and then we have that. So the thing is now if I do trim um, to do the opening, this will actually also trim the like the cabinet that I have here, which I don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually lock the layer for casework, which is this one. And so now when I do the trimming like this, uh, it doesn't basically affect the casework because it's locked. And when the trimming happened, you can see the dimension got messed up. This happens. It's okay. Uh, like it always happens, but that's fine. We're just going to redraw this dimension here. And this dimension is on the wrong layer. This should be on Windows. I really should switch from the using the yellow so that way I don't mix them up. But anyway, this one is going to move to here. And then we are on Windows. We're just going to do our standard rectangle. And then boom, we have this. And then now I can lock, unlock the casework. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is let's say we want to do upper cabinets. So for that, I'm going to use the hidden layer. So I'm going to switch to hidden and then we're going to do polyline and I'm just going to click from here. Um, and then here, let's say it's seven, 11, seven feet, 11 inches. So we're going to do six feet, 11, because the upper cabinets are usually like one foot deep. Uh, and then I'll stop here where the window is. I don't want to go over the sink and then there's a window. It's just not going to work. Maybe we will do interior elevations doing this kitchen as well, uh, but it will be probably in a separate tutorial. Okay, so now we have the upper cabinets. I think our kitchen is doing all right. We can add some furniture. I think let's add some furniture to it. So let's just add like a couple bar stools to the island. So let's switch here to furniture. So I'm just going to do a circle for that. I don't think I have a block for it. Let's see what we have. Oh, that's perfect. We'll use one of these guys. So let's use, uh, I think I'm going to use this one. So I'm going to copy it. I don't like to move the originals. Like you can, I think you should, you better leave them. Okay. This one may be a little too wide. So one thing I did for you, you'll see the size written inside. And I believe I did it in a way so the text doesn't print, but we'll see when we get to the printing. So we're going to move this back. Maybe we'll put it like two inches away and then I'm going to copy it up. Um, let's say, so this is two feet and then a little bit to the 
down, we'll do two feet in this direction. But let's space them a little bit more. Here's another three inches, another three inches. And then we will move this dimension a little bit farther so that way they're not top of each other. This dimension, I'll put it, I'll actually move it closer. The, the title for the kitchen will make it a little bit smaller and then we'll put, place it above the island. And then these guys will assign them the furniture layer. Let's switch it to here. So boom, now we can see their color clearly. Amazing. Um, I think the car, we should place it under furniture as well. Um, it's not really furniture, but you know, it's an object that we can hide it when we use the furniture there. Right, so the next thing I would like us to work on is the bathroom. So let's see what layers we can use here. Um, so we can use the same, we can use the same sink. I think there's a toilet seat here. This one, you can also get it. These ones, they do actually come from the library of, uh, of AutoCAD. I just placed them because they're easy to access from here. Um, so let's just copy the toilet seat. This is another amazing block that comes with AutoCAD. And I think you can just use it and literally never use any other toilet uh, block. So we're going to switch it. This is dynamic as well, which is amazing. So we're going to switch it to the plan view. Then we're going to move it. Okay, like somewhere here. So now let's do a vanity, okay? So let's do, so we have eight foot seven. So let's do the, the shower. I don't have a shower head uh, block. Maybe I should add that to my list of things to add. Uh, but for now, let's just do a shower, I guess. So the shower usually takes um, 30 inches. Okay, let's switch our layer. Let's see where we're gonna place this. We're gonna place it under fixture. So I'm gonna do a polyline. So here I'm going to go to the left 30 inches or two feet, six inches. And then let's make the shower maybe, I don't know, about seven feet. Let's make it five feet. And then maybe we'll place like a closet there. Okay, so we have this here. And then I'm going to close the, the polyline. Uh, and then let's hide the dimensions for a second. Okay, so we're going to lock them and hide them. So, and maybe we'll hide also the text. This is when the layers are really handy. This makes it really easy to work with the drawing. So we're focused now on the fixture. I'm just gonna give it a perimeter, maybe like two inches. This is literally just for visuals. Um, I'm gonna do a line here, a line here, and then maybe I'll do a circle uh, in the bot in the middle. Let's do like a two inch radius. Maybe it's too big, but it's okay. Um, and then let's do another circle, maybe like five inches. Uh, radius or yeah radius basically and then I'll delete it so this now we officially have a um, uh, shower and if you want to save this as a block I highly recommend it so let's block it I'm just gonna call it J shower okay and we're gonna choose a pick a base point let's just do the corner and then we're gonna create the block so boom try to use blocks whenever you can something you're gonna often use just block it and you'll save yourself a lot of time Okay, so now let's do a vanity. So let's see here. Uh, let's do 30 inches. Let's see how much we have here. So let's do it three feet wide. So 36, and then we'll do two feet wide. Maybe two feet is too much. Let's shorten it. Vanities can be a little bit shorter. So maybe 22 inches. And then the toilet, I'm gonna basically put it in the middle. So let's see how much we have here. Two feet, eight inches. So what I can do is move it from here to here, and then move it to the right by one foot four. There's so many ways you can move it to the middle, but you get the idea. And then for the sink, I'm just actually gonna copy this one. Okay, and then we'll place the windows, uh, or not the windows, we're gonna place the bed, maybe we'll start working on the bedrooms. This is perfect size, here we go. So maybe a little bit, oh, this one is a little bit bigger. Maybe let's push the vanity a little bit bigger and then boom so this is now a good size and then here since i wanted to do like a, a closet or something so what we can do is just do it with a rectangle it doesn't have to be an architectural closet it can, it can just be casework um, we can place it on the casework layer just in case um, you know if you want to really be organized okay so we have this i don't have a shower head um, a block for this but i think you get the idea um and anyway this is this should be good to go
Okay, so now let's bring back, I think let's bring back the dimensions and the text. Uh, we can leave them off. Let's get a bed. So this is a full bed size. If you want, um, if you want bigger bed sizes, you can look it up and switch it. Or I'll also leave you a link where you can get more bed blocks. But for now, we're going to use this one. We're going to assign it to its layer. It's going to sit on furniture. And then maybe we'll do like a couple nightstands. So let's do here, for example, 18 inches, 18 inches. And 18 and then we're going to close this we're going to move it away by three inches and move it to the left by three inches and let's say we want to place a lamp um let's match the layers since we're working on furniture let's actually switch the layer and then we're going to place a lamp for example here let's say five inches you can offset it by two inches to the inside and then you can do something like this to represent a light symbol you can always block it Let's block this, let's do lamp, J, lamp. Okay, and then we're gonna pick a point and then boom, create a block. And then we're gonna select these two guys and then we're gonna mirror it to the other side. And then if we wanna mirror all of this to the master bedroom, we're just gonna mirror it like this. And then we have this in place, okay? So this is all looking good. You can adjust like, you can adjust this a little bit more but for now, I think let's go to the let's go to the living space. So, oh, I do have these logged. Okay, you know what? Let's just uh, let's take out the text and dimensions for now. Um, that way, it will still be easy to work. So let's select maybe this one. Let's actually select all of these guys, and then we'll um, like we'll choose which one we really like accordingly. So let's rotate this one. So let's say we place it here. You know what, I'll place it the opposite way. I will mirror it. And then I do wanna erase the original. And then we're gonna move this like this. Uh, let's move it maybe here. Let's make it closer to the wall. Maybe place it here. Okay. This will create a lot of room behind it. So maybe we don't wanna do that. So let's not use this one. Let's copy this one. Let's rotate it and then let's move it here. Okay, and then I'm just gonna copy this one and then I'm gonna rotate it, place it under the window, right here, like this. And then we'll move it away by maybe four feet. We'll make some room here, let's say one foot and then we push it up. It's a little tight in here, but again, we're just trying to design. Maybe we will switch these two, like we will do the opposite. Let me see if I mirror them like this. Okay, here we go. We switch them, we switch their location. So, and if you wanna be a little bit more specific about their spacing, I mean, unless you're literally measuring the furniture, it's okay, you don't have to do that. But you know, um, it's just a matter of like seeing what works for you. Okay, so we have these guys. Uh, let's say we also use this one, just a little nice chair. Maybe we'll just use one here, okay? And then let's add a TV. Okay, so here's a 60 inch TV. So let's place this one in the living room, right here. We're gonna rotate it like this. And then let's align it with the middle of this sofa. And then let's do like a TV. Let's do a TV cabinet. So let's do 12 inch deep. Let's make it, I don't know, six feet wide. Okay, maybe too big. Then let's close it. And then let's uh, let's move it to where the TV is. And then let's, the TV, let's imagine it like hanging on the wall. And then we're gonna match the layer with all the furniture. Okay. And then let's say if you wanna add like a little nice coffee table in the middle, so what we can do is do, we can do ray, like I mentioned earlier, ray, and then another ray from here. And then now we have a center. And then let's say we want to do 18 inches table and then boom. And then we're going to rotate this maybe 15, like 15 degrees. I wanted the opposite degrees. So I'm just going to mirror it and erase and then maybe place it here. So now we have the living room. 
So the last thing we have left at this point is to actually add uh, the dining room uh, table. So I think I'm just going to use one of these combinations. I'm just going to copy it and do Control C or Ctrl Command V. Maybe this one is a little bit too big. You know what? Maybe we will do. Um, maybe let's do the four. Maybe this one will do better. Okay, and then this one, just to make it fit a little bit the space, I'm just going to rotate it from the center of the circle, and I'm going to type 45 to set the angle, and we have that. So maybe it's a little bit too close to this. I'll move this down, and then I'm going to match the properties, so that way this block is on the right um, on the right layer, essentially. So I was trying to have this window be more toward like the dining room, like this, but maybe we should align it more toward the uh, the uh, the island so uh, I don't know I think let's do let's maybe align it with the island I think the island is seven feet so we just need to push this six inches down so that way it's aligned um, I don't know I like it it's up to you like you can choose different of course if you like that um, and I think we are ready to jump on to the next concept. So the next concept is basically the title block, the printing and putting this floor plan on a sheet. That's what I want to cover. So before we do that, let's turn on our dimensions. Let's turn on the text layer. I think we had the dimensions locked. So I, did, I think this is all good right now. Uh, maybe we will add a couple more dimensions just so we have this all clean and ready to go. Let's switch to the right layer. We'll match that in a second. I'm clicking enter, uh, or sorry, return, to keep activating the command after, after, um, after I selected it already. So you can that way basically repeat quickly. I'm gonna match this. Now it's pretty common to also like dimension to the center of the windows. So I'm just gonna do that, and then I'm gonna do another one here, like this. Okay, so just from the corners, I like to do it from the interior corner, it's up to you which corner works for you better. Okay, uh, if I'm doing this that way, if you know a better way to do this, you are welcome to suggest it in the comments. But anyway, um, I like to show it this way, and I think you get the point, and we can jump to the next one. One last one, we can mirror this like this, and then where else we have. So this we placed, we can indicate this here. And then what other window do we have? We have up to here, just to show the center. And I think I got all of them. Uh, nope, we're just missing the dining and the living window. So we'll place that here. And I think now we are good to go. Okay, so let's put this floor plan on a paper and we want to print it. So the thing is with the printing, so you don't really do it here. You can do it on the model space. This area that we've been working with the entire time is an infinite space and you can print here realistically. But the proper way to print and the way I use and the way I learned and the way that I found it's really easy to, to work with and most efficient is to actually use something called the paper space or the layouts. So on the bottom here where you see model and then layout one and layout two, these come by default with the drawing when you start it. But basically we're gonna modify this um, and we're gonna make it work for our paper. Now yours might, be, uh, might have a white background. I modified it from the option settings, I'm gonna show you. I'm going to open the option settings. I'm going to move that here. Then we're going to go to look and feel. And I basically switch the paper space here. I think it was why the default. If I hit OK. So this is what you probably are seeing. I think it's easier to see it with the uh, black background or the blueprint. Up to you. I just like the, the black background. I think it's perfect. It's easy on the eye if you're working long hours on the computer. Um, so that's the first thing I want to mention. Uh, and there's a couple more things to mention about uh, this space. So if you see here, we are seeing like this window right here. 
and it's basically showing us um, like what we have in the drawing area or the model space okay uh, so this model space you can call it the drawing area or the model space AutoCAD calls it the model space so it's showing us basically everything in there um, and this paper the default size for the layout is actually eight and a half by eleven so uh, which is like a standard printer uh, size or letter size basically uh, so that's not gonna work for this floor plan floor plan usually like if we're doing a quarter inch scale um, you want to put it on a 36 by 24 inch uh, sheet and that's like really the standard architectural sheet size um, it's pretty common for interior design as well some interior designers like to put on smaller size papers like on 11 by 17 or the tabloid size uh, which I'll show but really we're gonna it's the same thing you can follow along it's just like we're just gonna go with the 36 by 24 so how do we go to the paper settings of this space so the easiest way to access it is to go to the print command or the plot AutoCAD calls it plot as well so either or and then once you click that we're gonna get this window and then from this window there's multiple settings I want to go over with the, uh, the the first one that I want to go over um, is the printer settings so here what I want to switch to is the one that says DWG to PDF so that's the first setting the next setting is the paper size so the paper size don't be overwhelmed I know it's a huge list but the one that you want to focus on it's called the arc uh, full bleed and it's the one that I'm highlighting right now so you can choose arc full bleed uh, the paper size name is D um, there's A, B, C, D, and E, and then E1 for 30 by 42. But I'm going to choose either 36 by 24 or 24 by 36. It doesn't matter because you can switch the orientation, which is from here. Okay, but we're going to keep the landscape orientation. So that's the second thing we're changing about the printing from the printer setting. Uh, so we did switch the printer, we switched the pa paper size. And then the third thing we're going to change is the plot style. So what is the plot style? So the plot style controls the like the colors of like how it's going to print. Is it going to print colored or is it going to print monochrome or white and black? Uh, so what we're going to do is we do want to change it to black and white essentially. But I just want to show you if we do preview right now um, on the Mac, it will actually create a PDF. I use Adobe Acrobat, so it shows me this on Adobe Acrobat. If you're using just the Mac preview it will open on that but here we go like it printed that paper and it applied the size and you can see here it's printing everything in color okay so this this is not what I want we do want to print um, no one actually prints in color um, uh, especially if you're doing like uh, a submission set for building and safety you're gonna go always with my with the monochrome settings so we're gonna apply to the layout and then now when we preview you're going to see now the drawing is uh, in black and white. So let's go back to AutoCAD. So here, so we did all of these settings. The paper is correct. We have the right plot style. We have the, uh, uh, the right paper size and the printer. And now you're probably wondering, so how do we scale this? So you might be looking at the scale here, but we're not going to use this. We're going to do the scaling from the paper, and I'll show you right now. I'm going to hit cancel right now. This is not going to cancel the settings because we've already clicked on apply to layout. So this is just going to close this window. So we're going to cancel. And now I want to show you where do we apply the scale essentially. So I was tell telling you earlier about this window that is showing us the model space. This element or this window is called viewport. Viewport, like I said, it's it shows us basically what's on the model space. So one of the first things we're going to do is to actually expand it roughly like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go inside it. We're going to double click on it like while the mouse is hovering inside it or the pointer essentially. Um, we're going to double click right now. So that activated the view. So now when you're, ta uh, you're panning, you're able to like basically adjust it while staying within the same paper space. So now once you zoom in, this is how you're seeing the floor plan bigger essentially. Now to set the scale on this viewport, what you need to do while you're inside it, you can do it while you're outside. 
uh, like while it's not active. But basically, once you're inside and it's activated, you can go on the bottom right side. And remember, we talked about annotation scale. When you go to the paper, this scale becomes called it becomes viewport scale, and it controls this specific viewport. So once I click on this, and then from here I choose quarter inch. So now this is to the proper scale. So to deactivate the viewport, I'm gonna go outside the frame of it, and I'm gonna double click, okay, with the with the mouse. And now this is basically now we're back to the paper space, and this viewport is set to quarter inch scale. Now you can modify it from outside, like while just highlighting it. You just basically go here, and we can say the same. Like we can tell it show me half inch scale. We can tell it show me one inch scale. Now obviously our floor plan is really big uh, and it's not going to fit perfectly um, on this paper size. So usually you do like the one inch scale. Let's say if we're focusing on the kitchen, that's when you would do it. But other than that, if we're trying to show a floor plan, you want to stick to a quarter inch scale. Especially for this size of a project. If this project was much bigger, like a commercial space, you might use uh, like a one eighth, uh, uh, one eighth of an inch, so that will be half the size. Okay, but for our purpose, we're gonna go with quarter inch scale, and I think you get the idea of scaling. So that's amazing. That's literally the only time you're gonna scale your drawing. You don't do scaling from the model. You don't do it from the printing setting. You just scale the viewport. Okay, so that's about scaling. So, so this, so now we have this. We have the right scale. Uh, and now if we go to print again or to plot and we go to preview and we already have all the settings like I said this should come out in the right scale and now if we zoom in you're going to notice the line weights which we set up in the layers you can see clearly the dimensions and the text are actually very thin uh, the furniture and the fixtures they are pretty thin while the walls are thicker we can make them a little bit thicker too let's actually do that I would like to have them maybe let's expand this window a little bit more let's do it I think now we can do it from here so line weight walls let's make it 16 and then now you can immediately go actually to the preview command so you can just type preview so that will take us immediately there and then I'm gonna zoom in so I like the wall thickness right, right now even better okay um, and now I'm gonna jump basically to talk about the title block. I realized I didn't talk about the hatch command in this uh, video. Maybe maybe let's just go over it very quickly. I'm just gonna apply the hatch in a couple of places to show it on the walls. So the hatch command, you just type H, in case you don't know what the hatch command, you'll see in a second. And basically, I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna click within this space, and this will fill up this, this space with a hatch. Okay, I think I do have a layer for that. So I'm, I'm doing this all in one go, so that way I can it becomes a single object, and then I can modify the layer one time, and it will look correct, and I'm going to hit return, and then now I'm going to select this hatch, and basically I'm going to switch its layer. So I'm going to do that from the properties, and I'm going to switch it to the hatch layer, which should come out gray, and now you can see this um, pretty clean, pretty easy. Honestly, the hatch, you only want to do it at the very end once you're done with the design because if you have it and you're designing and you're moving stuff and deleting and trimming, it, it might get deleted anyway or it might get in the way. And just so you know, hatch can literally crash your entire computer. So be careful with the hatch. Never explode the hatch object, okay? So that's for you. So now back to the layout, okay? So now let's do another preview. Let's look at our floor plan with the hatch. Boom, this is this is the result I wanted to show you essentially, okay? So if you wanna make it gray, we just need to modify the monochrome settings, but I'm not gonna go over that maybe in a future video, um, but you do have the option to do that. The last thing I wanna show you right now is basically a title block. So how do we put like our name, our logo here? Um, like what's the sheet title, what's the sheet name and everything, uh, the sheet title, sheet name, same thing, of course, the sheet number, the date, and stuff like that. So to do a title block, you can basically create it from scratch. You can draw immediately here on the paper space. So I can basically do like, um, I don't know, like let's do a rectangle, for example, and I'll do it from the corner kind of here. Okay. 
like this. Okay, and then I can basically do a polyline from the left side or the right side, sorry. And then I'll go to the left maybe four inches. And then here I'm going to go down. And then, by the way, for the viewport, I do have a layer for it. So let's just place it. I believe it's called Title Block. Amazing. And then um, I'm also going to switch the layer to Title Block. And then I'm going to switch what I'm currently working on to title block. So whatever we're putting is going to sit on that layer. So now I can just add text here. So I'm going to say, for example, J, uh, JCAD, for example. Now the text is obviously ginormous compared to the paper size because in paper, so like now in paper space, when we're working with this, this paper is 36 by 24 inches. This text, when you select it and you look on the properties and you go down, you're going to see that the style of this is JC48. So maybe switch it to this one. So now this is going to come up to be, uh, I think it should show us the text height. So this is 3 sixteenths of an inch. So maybe let's switch it, make it a little bit bigger. Maybe this one gets okay, a little too big, the style. So let's do this. So here I can put the name and then I can say this is a floor plan. Okay. You get the idea. I do text edit, floor plan, and I put the date and everything. Now to save you time, I do have another free download for you, which you can download the, from the JCAT store. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to save a lot of time with it, and hopefully you always use it, and all the blocks are helpful. Um, so to insert it, so this one is a little different because we're not when we copy it and paste it, it doesn't really work that way because of a feature in it, and I'll show you it in a second. It's called attributes. So the way to insert it within our drawing, we need to go, we need to use the insert command because it is a block, but it has attributes in it, meaning that it has text that we can edit from outside the block. Okay, so we're gonna start the insert command. And when we do that, when we click it, if you notice, it switched the window on the right side um, from the from the layers and properties, basically, to the blocks. OK, so this one earlier, I think we we looked at the at the blocks that come out with uh, come in within AutoCAD. Maybe I didn't cover it, but just in case, uh, basically, once we are here, um, we're going to click on this button. And then here we have this file, which this is the download I'll provide you. Uh, I'm going to select it and I'm going to click open. So once you do that, you're going to see a single block in that file. You're going to right click on it and you're going to choose insert in drawing. Okay. So now when it's asking you, where do you want to, what's the insertion point? You can visually pinpoint on the corner on the bottom, but you can type zero comma zero and that will place it exactly in the corner. Now, when we do that, it's going to ask us for these questions, um, and I'll show you them, but for now, we're just going to hit confirm, and boom. Okay, so this inserted the title plaque. So let's look at it. Let's look at it actually on the PDF. So let's do preview, another preview, and boom. So basically, this title block has all the information you mostly need. You just need to edit the original file that I had uh, for you. You just need to place your logo, put your name, your address, and your business or your personal phone number and email address, and you modify that. And then here you're able to put like who is the design, drawn by, revision, and date. So this you can't, I don't think I made them attributes, you have to write on top of them. But you're able to modify the scope of work, project address, the date, sheet title, and the sheet number. Okay, so let's look at it in AutoCAD. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to select it and we're going to do text edit. So that will open this window. Um, so these are basically all the text within the block itself. So let's do this. So design by, let's say me, J. Jara. This one drawn by, then scope of work, AutoCAD for Mac tutorial. Okay, and then uh, it's a scope of work too. Like, let's say I want to be a little bit more detailed. Floor plan, uh, floor plan, 1200 square feet. Uh, it's the third thing. Uh, new construction, for example. Okay, and you can see automatically like it's filling in the information here. Project address, uh, lovely Los Angeles, California. So this is the first line. I don't know, let's say, I don't know, Burbank Boulevard. And then here, project address is Los Angeles, California. 
9000000 and then the date 1-1-2023 Happy New Year and then sheet title uh, proposed floor plan and then the scale you can switch it good that I had this um, I can just type it one quarter of an inch equals one foot dash zero inches and then the sheet number since this is our first sheet I'm gonna call it a triple zeros I'm gonna hit OK I'm gonna hit return and then when I look at this this should be all good to go so now we're gonna do a preview to look at it and boom all right so that was it okay we had all these okay if this video helped you today please show your support by liking and subscribing i do post these autocad tutorials on our patreon page ad free so you can enjoy watching without interruption i also invite you to visit the jcad blog store where i share premium cad blogs to help you save time on your projects Thank you for watching and looking forward to your comments.